So, he's short and fluffy. But now he's not short. But he's still fluffy. Welcome to Let's Play Klonoa 2, Lunatea's Veil. This is my favorite game in the Klonoa series. Thus far, at least. And actually, I've hardly played it, so I shouldn't really be saying that, but I still say that anyways, having seen a full playthrough of this game before. As you can see, I just, uh, just earlier, like, not even an hour ago, started playing through this game a little bit. Just as a practice for me playing, uh, right now. I intended to play through the entire game before starting a Let's Play this, but oh well, I guess. This is how things worked out, but I guess things can be more fresh in my mind if I practice stuff the day that I'm actually going to record it. Anyhow. So let's make a new file. Uh, KB. I don't really have much room to work with, do I? There we go. Yes, it is. Keep it box. Yeah, you can screw around with your controls and whatnot. This is more of a Japanese style of playing games. Uh, kind of like how in Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix, if you're used to playing a North American release of Kingdom Hearts 2, the X and Circle Buttons are swapped. This is pretty much the same thing. You just switch um, Circle and X. And for some reason, the spare button is just kind of bound to jump, so... And also notice that L1 and L2 are bound to, quote, action. Those don't serve any gameplay purpose, but I have a lot of fun with those buttons, you will see later. Also, I'm going to show you the audio settings because I like seeing all the little moves. It's cute. Alright, that's good. Let the game begin. This game has a wondrous story. Kind of. Actually has a story. Like a big one. It's by Klonoa Works. You even have a company for Klonoa at this point. And they're pretty up, up, and up front about the whole, this is what the game is, ordeal. A strange dream. I think it's referring to Klonoa 1, by the way. I mean, it's referring to this game. He has a change of clothes. He's no longer small and short, like it was in Klonoa 1. It's the same clothes he wore in the last Klonoa game I let's played. Here we are. By the way, if you haven't actually seen Klonoa 1, I do recommend you do that before watching this playthrough. This game is very up front about spoiling things that happen in Klonoa 1. Very big things that happen in Klonoa 1. It just kind of assumes you already knew those things. Love that voice. Oh, I actually have to press buttons to make the scenes go by. Dream stones are everywhere. How am I not dead? I hate water. So what's going on is a little bit less of a mystery this time around, since we've already gone through this whole ordeal back in, uh, our world back in the first Kanoa game.
We got the ring, but we don't got Hupo. By the way, uh, you, there's a, no actually no English voice acting for this game. The only game in the Clonoa series with English voice acting is actually the Wii, Wii release of the first game. And yeah, it sucked anyways. We'll learn all about what that means later. Popka! He amuses me greatly. Now there's actually some sort of two player in this game in which the second player can play as Popka, but I don't know what Popka's actually capable of doing. He can fly for one, but I don't remember what kind of effects he has on the gameplay. I don't think it's much. Well. Well, we don't have Popka. Or no, Popka. We don't have Fupo, so. Might as well get a replacement. Looks like Lenon doesn't exactly have his bearings and remember how things went down last time. Also, this game is pretty. I think this game actually has much more representation than uh, the Wii Wii release of the first game. Anyways. So, this plays a lot like uh, the original Klonoa. I'm gonna have to get used to playing a uh, 3D Klonoa game again after having played uh, Dream, or uh, Empire of Dreams. And fire is happening and trees are falling apart. Wonderful. We have these things now, these little twisty tornado things that let us uh, bounce. That's all they do, actually. They can be angled and shoot us across things as well. You'll recognize the enemies and items and whatnot from the first game. I assume you've actually seen that. There's not much of an explanation. And the game doesn't really tell you right off the bat how to do things. Well, some things at least. Of course I can. I really like the art style of this game. Everything has like a certain black outline. It kind of reminds me of cell shading in a way, but it's not. It has lighting, but everything still has a black outline regardless. Yes, I did. Yeah, I just did like four on the way here. I have to use the D-pad for a moment. The L on stick doesn't do anything in this game. Look at that. Mm-hmm. Strike a pose. <laughs> if you're wondering how I'm doing this stuff, if you press L1 and L2, it was mentioned earlier that L1 and L2 are the action buttons. If you press those at random points during the game, different things will happen. Like you striking a pose or just making random noises. Now I'm gonna recognize a few new things from uh, Empire of Dreams, such as these things I can re never remember the name of, as well as something in the, that is currently in the background. This game feels a bit slidey. Like if I keep running and stop, I slide around a little bit. Sometimes. Only sometimes. I have to do with the terrain. Yeah, so I remember these things from the scrolling levels in Empire of Dreams.
And like usual, there's a whole foreground and background interaction and ordeal. Uh, so these things I'm picking up, these little stars and bubbles, you'll learn what those things actually are later on. But just think of them as this game's equivalent to the prisoners in terms of gameplay. And they do actually unlock things. Unlike the last... the other Klonoa game. Well, it's pretty much just for show. And once again, hang, or, uh, taking out giant enemies, actually. That's Sea Dream Stones. And getting all the Dreamstones in level actually gives you bonuses this time around, too, although I don't remember what those are. I don't remember uh, what the requirements are, specifically. Like, I don't know if there's anything you get for getting every single Dreamstone in the game. Uh, well, getting hard for the Dreamstones in every single level, at least. There are actually some levels that have... There's at least one level that has more than 150 Dreamstones. Just to be nice to you. Hi, Teton! Boom. Once again, these things aren't really too hard to find, all those little, uh, stars. I'll be, again, referring to them by the proper names once they actually, uh... Once we're actually told what they are. Largely because I don't actually remember what they are. Also, enemies have much smaller hitboxes in this game. Okay. So I find it really hard, yeah, I find it really hard to actually get all 150 Dreamstones right here. Like, I don't know how you, s s you can't slow down there. And you can't repeat that area either. So, eh. I don't know if I'm going to be going for 100% in this game or not. And I really not prefer not to have to get every single Dreamstone at every single level. Uh, I'm, if I, I might do that on my own time, on my own file, but I'm not going to want to do that twice, once on my own time, and then once in a let's play, so, I don't know. Barnacles. And these are mirror fairies, like before. They double all your stuff. Any, uh, any stones you pick up while they are active, which is not very long, it's doubled. are doubled. Yeah. I've also noticed that we have three health in this game. Um, that just kind of goes along with how I mentioned earlier that it's easier to not get hit by enemies now. You're not going to find as many offensive enemies in this game. Oh, speaking of being hurt. Right, so you're not going to find as many things trying to kill you, and you will actually find... You're going to find lots of hearts all over for some reason. You guys have a certain level from Balfrey King of Bottom. The Kelp Slide. The ring is capitalized. Okay, I guess. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Who's that? Does the process of testing whether somebody's a full priestess or not usually involve sticking them in a ring? Lunatia. I've always seen you pronouncing it Luatea. Well. 
的。Mm-hmm. It's actually almost an episode's worth already. Anyways. Any given person can actually have up to four save files for some reason. Or you can have what seems to be unlimited save files. In this game, or something. Unless I accidentally. I think I might have accidentally overridden my main save when I made a new file. That sucks. Oh, hey, there's a green thing. That was because I collected all the stars. But yeah, I think I accidentally overwrote my save. That sucks. <laughs> Let's look, actually. Out of curiosity. If I go to a new game... Oh, no, see? Yeah, you can have up to four... You can have up to 16 saves. That's interesting. Four saves for... Four... Four slots of four saves. I don't know why they have that formula. Whatever, I guess. Yeah. Four files with four data slots in each. Very peculiar. Anyways, I'll head on to uh, the Guji's Island, and then we can finish off the episode from there. Because the next episode, would next level, will just be too long to keep in here. This game has some really long levels, and the game is long in general. <laughs> so it's gonna be kind of hard to fit in the uh, levels into concise episodes. I love how there's breaks in the dialogue so I can actually say things without speaking over people. Not that you guys can understand what they're saying anyways, so you have to read the captions, but whatever. Look at that cone. I like the different kingdoms in uh, the first game. Well, at least one of these worlds, it, or well, at least one of these kingdoms aren't exactly peaceful. But, uh, that's something we'll see later. That's unharmonic, I guess. Well, alright, that's reason for suspicion then. You just said all those words in like a second. I love how the words are actually paced though as they speak them. Not like I have anything else to do. You had to think about it? There you go. There's a bird on his cone. Whoa, white flash. 
Ouch, indeed. Kurawa, you jerk. Alright, though, that's gonna be it for this episode of Let's Play Klonoa 2, Lunatia's Bale. Ah, I'm excited. I'm very excited. Because... I like playing this game. <laughs> I'm basically playing a new game right now, because I just started playing this game not long ago at all. Like, less than two hours ago, so... It makes me happy. Anyways, you can press R1. I think I showed this earlier. You can go to this little status menu. It shows you how many uh, gems you have for each, or dreamstones you have for each level, as well as whether you have all of the uh, little pieces and your rewards, getting all the different pieces, like that little green guy. Once again, we'll understand what that is a little bit better later on. But I haven't been able to get all the dreamstones in Sea of Tears because that one flying section kicks my ass. Anyhow, that is going to be it for this episode. Let's play. Klonoa Tula Tia's Veil, and the next episode we're going to head on over to La Lakusha, which has some very nice music, by the way, on our quest to reach the first bell. And then things will go from there. Plot twists abound. See you guys!